But to, let's have a little look at some NXT highlights then, Mag. So straight off the bat, we got to go with kind of what closed the show, really. The biggest highlight, the biggest, probably the biggest talking point coming out was the return of the Velveteen Dream. So this kind of all came off the back of, uh, uh, it, uh, it was a multi-man match. I think it was a, 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 a match between the Bros Awaits and Tommaso Ciampa going up against Adam Cole, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. So this was a really fun match. And this all stems from a big kind of seven-man brawl that happened earlier on in the night where UE were kind of scouring the backstage area, trying to find Tommaso Ciampa. In the end, Tommaso Ciampa found uh, them, found Adam Cole. Uh, they brought out into the arena. William Regal stepped in, as he uh, often does, um, and uh, announced a big six-man tag to take place in the main event. So the six-man tag went to a disqualification end when Roddy Strong, who was kind of supporting his colleagues from the outside, he kept getting involved during the match, but he got involved kind of big style uh, at the end there, causing the disqualification uh, when I think he attacked Massive Champa in the ring. This led to Undisputed Era then spray painting a big yellow cross, as in uh, X marks the spot on the back of Tommaso Ciampa. Obviously, further in their storyline, Tommaso Ciampa is going to be going up against Adam Cole for the NXT Championship um, next Sunday in Portland, take over Portland. Um, and then uh, with the Bros Awaits, they were kind of laid out on the outside. They they were kind of uh, left to UE decimating Tommaso Ciampa to be honest with you we thought to close the show then the lights went out uh, there was a graphic on the screen these three circles that have been kind of popping up um, in the bottom corner of our screen throughout the night kind of wondering what they were they were today's they were Wednesday's date and then they kind of merged into the the three lensed uh, glasses sunglasses spectacles that the Velveteen Dream normally wears then we saw an image um, of uh, somebody up on the top turnbuckle the lights came on. It was the Velveteen Dream. He's been out for about four months now. I think in storyline mode, he was put out uh, by the Undisputed Era in a backstage attack. But he's actually been suffering some quite severe uh, back pains, back injuries. I don't know if he's had surgery or just kind of had, just recovered uh, with, with therapy. And uh, But the Velveteen Dream, he dropped all four members of UE in the ring with a big flying crossbody. Um, he then kind of, I think, uh, went after Body Strong. He pulled off his, his uh, trousers to reveal some spray-painted uh, trunks, um, a la Ravishing Rick Rude with a picture of... Uh, the Velveteen Dream himself and uh, Marina Shafir, Roddy Strong's wife. So that was pretty cool. And that's how the show went off the air with the return of the Velveteen Dream. It's quite unexpected. Um, but uh, a real pop from me, a real pop from the fans in the, the Full Sail Arena, the NXT Arena, as they're calling it now. Uh, but a real highlight to cap off another great week of NXT. But uh, the Velveteen Dream, uh, I'm guessing you're a fan of his, or maybe you're not. Uh, but uh, what was your reactions to, to what went down on Wednesday night? I loved it. I absolutely loved the Velveteen Dream. It took me a while to get into him. I didn't really kind of uh, get the character. Uh, but then when we had the uh, the Say My Name promo, and, um, yeah, it, it just clicked with me. Um, yeah, it, it was superb. I, I think he, he looked almost superhero-like when he was mm-hmm. when he was farting off the the Undisputed Era. I mean, there were there were points where he was... He was facing off against all four of them and, in, and none of them could get a shot off of him, which I thought was a little bit overboard. But yeah, the the trousers was an absolutely brilliant, <laughs> brilliant point. Uh, the call, did he have on it like Call Me uh, Marina or something like that? <laughs> yeah. A picture of uh, of their kid or something. Yeah, just, yeah, it, it's Velveteen Dream being Velveteen Dream, uh, a great end to a show. And like I said, it was very, very unexpected because Normally, you kind of hear these whisperings that these characters are coming back. I mean, for instance, we we kind of knew that Charlotte was going to be on the show because we'd, we'd heard the rumours. But I don't remember seeing any rumours that Velveteen was going to uh, be, be ready to come back. And it was a great way to end the show. Yeah, it really was. And I think that, you know, despite the fact he's been recovering from a serious back injury, I think the absence has done Velveteen Dream good, to be honest with you, because he he was being, I'm not going to say overexposed, but he was on NXT every single week because, of course, people see him as, you know, an amazing character, a good wrestler, um, somebody that's good on the microphone, pretty much the total package. It's going to do well, you know, on the biggest stage in the future, I'm sure. But he was kind of, you know, the, the, the allure of the Velveteen dream was kind of wearing off a little bit in my eyes anyway so having that three or four month uh, absence uh, to recover from his back injury I think it's done in good he's come back uh, nice and fresh in everybody's eyes um, he looked great on Wednesday 
he's now back in kind of like the, the main event scene you could say possibly feuding with members of the undisputed era um who knows where that could lead there's been rumblings that he might be involved in a match at wrestlemania against john cena i hope that doesn't wow. happen because uh, uh i i i i i'm not the biggest john cena fan but i think if we're gonna you know introduce velveteen dream let's let's do it kind of gradually on the on the main roster or maybe to a big pay-per-view like that but uh but yes i think there's obviously big plans for the velveteen dream a great return on wednesday night um love the pants i love the kind of call back to ravishing rick rude as well it's one of my kind of favorite wrestlers uh from the kind of the 80s and the 90s early 90s but uh yeah um absolutely loved it so um uh, yeah, and uh, uh, obviously it furthers the storyline between Tommaso Ciampa and Adam Cole. Of course, they got their big championship match at Portland, take over Portland next Sunday. Um, and uh, obviously you got to Undisputed Era further in their storyline with the, the, the bros awaits uh, Pete Dunne, Matt Riddle. They've got their tag team championship match um, uh, at Portland as well. So it kind of, it kind of um, helped us further a few storylines but uh, the big talking point was definitely the velveteen dream but um um other highlights of nxt this week we had uh, dominic dijakovic he defeated killian dane uh, setting himself up as the official number one contender to keith lee's north american championship and those two will be going at it at takeover portland as well keith lee obviously the man at the moment on nxt uh, had a great run in the survivor series had a really good kind of cameo appearance and face to face with brock lesnar at the war rumble of course and obviously, Dijakovic and Keith Lee, they're like uh, uh, Godzilla and King Kong, aren't they? I think these two, you know, they nearly had the feud of the year in 2019. Their matches, uh, you know, never disappoint. There's always some big kind of holy shit moments when they do get in the ring. And with, you know, being on a, a takeover, which is something they've not done before against one another and with a, a championship bout on the line, I think that match is going to be absolutely tremendous and uh, could potentially be a show stealer. But um, Keith Lee, Dominic Dijakovic, is it doing anything for you, Max? Are you looking forward to that one? Yeah, uh, it's one of those kind of matches where you could watch it 10 different matches and, and still be entertained. Uh, mm. We've had quite a lot of them like, recently, and uh, they've kind of thrown uh, Damian Priest in the mix a couple of times. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a match I'm very, very happy to see. Um, in in the match that uh, Dominic Dajkovic had, uh, one thing that did stand out to me was how quickly uh, Killian Dane has has fallen off the radar. He came back to uh, NXT like full of piss and vinegar with this uh, with this new kind of like uh, political Northern Irish gimmick, and it, I thought that signified the, him going to on to be uh, to have bigger and better things. Uh, we got a little bit of a feud with Pete Dunn. Uh, he was involved uh, with um, I think he was involved with Dominic Dijakovic uh, a few months ago, and then nothing, and then he's come back to to obviously be the full guy in this match. But yeah, uh, going back to Keith Lee versus Dominic Dijakovic, that's, I think it's going to be easily the, the match of the night. Um, those two have just got absolutely chemistry for days. Uh, Keith Lee can do things that no man of his, of his stature should be able to do. And um, I think Dominic Dijakovic is one of the most underrated talents in NXT. So yeah, I'm, I'm all about that match. Yeah, it could look say be uh, be match of the night for sure. But then when we look at the the takeover card a bit later, Mags, I mean, there, there's some mind blowing matches on there. But uh, mm-hmm. we, we'll discuss them very briefly a bit later. Then we had a kind of a split screen interview segment: Johnny Gargano and Finn Balor um, ahead of their uh, talk about big matches for takeover. Their epic uh, match that's, that's set to take place in Portland next weekend. Uh, Johnny Gargano, he said that uh, he needs this match to to beat the longest reigning NXT champion of all time to solidify himself is the face of the brand uh, Johnny went on to say that um, um, he didn't want the Finn Balor um, that lost to Bobby Lashley 17 weeks in a row I thought that was the line of yeah. the interview for sure uh, yeah. Balor then said that he won't just give Johnny Gargano the match of the year he'll give Johnny Gargano the match of his life so uh, Balor kind of uh, retorting there with with another kind of um, you know a, a, a shot at Johnny Gargano so another fun segment certainly helped to kind of further and build their storyline to take over Portland next week. And I think that uh, this is probably the match that a lot of people, mo- most people are looking forward to. I-, I said on last week's episode of the Wrestling Majonis podcast, you've possibly got the number one and the number two best wrestlers on the entire brand. Um, and I think my-, my guest at the time, Kurt Johansson, said it's possibly the number one and the number two wrestlers in the world. Some might say yeah, uh, going up against one another. 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. But um, another another top match for Takeover Portland. Um, any kind of takeaways from this interview segment and kind of your feelings ahead of their match uh, at Takeover Portland next weekend? Yeah, um, again, I, th- I, I love this match. Um, I love the way that uh, that Johnny's kind of like the defender of of the new style of NXT, and then obviously Finn Balor's come back. Uh, wanted to take it almost back to his style. Obviously we we're getting the uh to 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 get his future we must must uh go back to his past kind of thing. I really love the kind of like the two heads of NXT new and old really facing off and yeah, it's a, a very interesting match and if they're allowed to to do what we know that they can do, this this again is is potentially match of the night. I mean, we keep speaking about these matches, and they're all they're all going to be trying to outdo each other. Yeah, it's it's just NXT just knocks it out of the park every single takeover. Yeah, but but that's it. I mean, with NXT, we've said this time and time again, Max. You know, they don't restrict their wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Um, and to give them credit, you will have five, maybe six show stealing matches on Saturday night in Portland. But each one of them will be different. They'll both have their different flavor, yeah. their different feel, their different vibe, and they, they could all be potentially, you know, good four, four and a half, five star matches, but all be completely different for one another. Which is which is the best thing about NXT. They don't restrict their wrestlers, but uh, they really know how to kind of structure the matches put the matches together build the feuds and leading into these big shows uh but yeah johnny gargano finn balor um many people might say that that could main event the show or whether they're going to go with Tommaso versus adam cole for the championship to main event the show but you know once again you look at the card you can just kind of put put a pin in any of the names really and that could be your main event but Mm -hmm. uh yeah that that match is going to be amazing um give them a good 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and let them kind of do what they do. Just let them do what they do. Um, we, we, we saw Jordan Devlin on Wednesday as well, going up against Tyler Breeze, another NXT favourite. This was a non-title match, of course. Jordan Devlin recently winning the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. And that really good four-way match at Worlds Collide a couple of weekends ago. Uh, the Irish ace uh, put Tyler Breeze away with a, with a stiff headbutt. And then he's Devlin's side, uh, say, to suplex for the one, two, three. I really enjoyed this match. I thought Tyler Breeze was the perfect opponent for for Jordan Devlin in the match. Uh, such a system. Tyler Breeze got a fair bit of offense in, to be honest with you. But what I'm really impressed about and what I really want your thoughts on, Mags, is, is, is Jordan Devlin. And uh, we said for such a long time that he's been delivering on the, the indie scene around Europe and around the UK, of course. He's really caught fire on NXT UK, but uh, they finally pushed the button on this guy. They finally kind of, you know, uh, lit the kind of the, the blue touch paper, you could say, and they gave him the belt at Worlds Collide, and he's running with it. Um, you know, a great match here, although it's non-title. He's appearing on two, uh, 205 Live, and um, his, his character... He's there, he's, he's wrestling ability, he's really kind of becoming the total package. And uh, when we talk about cruiserweights on Wednesday on Badlands, Jordan Devlin may not come up, but I think if we were to, if we, if, if we were to do the same podcast in a few years' time, he may well come up as one of the best cruiserweights, you never know. Yep, absolutely. And is it, I feel kind of a little bit guilty uh, in the fact that he was one of ours, like he was uh, kind of one of our, our hidden gems and I yeah. don't really want to share him with the rest of the wrestling <laughs> world uh, in that way. But he's, for for someone who has been in one of the hugest shadows in wrestling underneath him, Balor, coming from basically the, the same town, the same uh, training underneath him, wow, he, he's, he's really, really stepped out of that shadow and and made his made himself his own person. Absolutely so, so proud of, of how he... He has stepped up and going going across to uh, the the golden yellow of, of NXT. Uh, for me, he was always going to be. He was always stuck in a kind of a position in NXT UK where he was never going to be the top guy with uh, with when uh, Walter Sand. He was yeah. always going to be that the second guy. So I'm glad that they kind of did find this role for him. Uh, as the NXT Cruiserweight Champion, and now yeah. he's, we're going to get dream match after dream match after dream match with him. Uh, this was a great match, and like you said, Tyler Breeze was the perfect foil for for Devlin to really showcase what he can do. And the upcoming match with with Angel Garza will 
will be again. It'll be a match that could possibly be match of the night. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, I thought Tyler Breeze was really good. It's a shame that Tyler Breeze has kind of he, he returns back to the you know the, the NXT brands, and I think he's going to do a lot more there than he ever would have on SmackDown or Raw, of course. But I think I I, I want to see him back in the ring with Fandango and kind of. I thought that's when they were kind of really clicking as a tag team. But unfortunately, yeah. Fandango is a little bit uh, injury prone. But uh, if they're not going to do anything with Tyler Breeze, you know, beyond the odd good match like this against Jordan Devlin, then uh, yeah, um, I'd like to see him as a tag team champion sometime in the future with Fandango. But because uh, he's never won um, any gold at all since uh, he's been with NXT or on Raw or SmackDown, he's had his opportunities. I think back to when NXT was in its infancy. I know that he was one of the, the main contenders there in championship matches with Sami Zayn and Pac and uh, Adrian Neville, as he was called then, and, and one or two others, uh, Bo Dallas and uh, Tyson Kidd, uh, back when uh, NXT was in its infancy. We've seen Tyler Breeze and Fandango in championship matches on the main roster, more in comedy matches, to be honest with you. So, yeah, it'd be nice to see him have at least one strap um, in his WWE career um, before he's kind of uh, forgotten again. But uh, yeah, definitely a good match. But I'm loving everything about Jordan Devlin. I think, as you as you said, you know, the Cruiserweight Championship is kind of, is, is the perfect kind of, uh, kind of uh, mechanism for Jordan Devlin to make a bigger name for himself over in the States. Um, and I think, yeah, the two go well together. The Cruiserweight Championship and Jordan Devlin are definitely looking good in my eyes. And I think he's, you can tell just by looking at him, he's loving every minute of it as well. He's really reveling having that opportunity as the Cruiserweight Champion. And it's kind of bringing out that extra that extra 10% of Jordan Devlin as if we needed an extra 10%. But that was really good. And then kind of the final section uh, from this week's NXT I want to talk about is Charlotte Flair. So, she obviously had this uh, confrontation with Rhea Ripley on Monday Night Raw uh, last week, which kind of led to Charlotte um, not announcing who her WrestleMania uh, opponent is going to be. Of course, she won the Women's Raw Rumble, uh, kind of at the Raw Rumble last month. And uh, the rumblings are that, you know, she's got her option of either the Raw champion, the SmackDown champion, and then possibly the NXT champion. Um, so Charlotte said, I'm going to be on NXT this week. She was there. Um, this segment started with uh, with Bianca Belair out in the ring and uh, to address uh, address the NXT champion Rhea Ripley, of course, and uh, Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair is going to be going face to face and take over Portland. That's going to be another big match. Then Charlotte comes out, the former ten times world champion, of course, uh, to huge kind of uh, chance of welcome home from the NXT fans. Of course, Charlotte kind of started her WWE career in NXT. A former uh, was she a former NXT champion? I'm not sure that she was, to be honest with you. Um, I think she's the only one who. Who didn't win the NXT Women's Title? I yeah, think. Yeah, you could be right. I don't recall, kind of in my memory bank, seeing a picture of Charlotte with the NXT Championship. Uh, I remember Paige obviously very vividly, and uh, and uh, Bailey and, and and Sasha Banks, of course. Uh, but then the current NXT Women's Champion or the current Women's Champion. Uh, NXT champion Rhea Ripley comes out there's a great moment where Charlotte puts her hand in front of the face of Bianca Belair and Bianca Belair just kind of couldn't believe her eyes at the way that Charlotte kind of disrespected her almost as if Bianca Belair was an afterthought in all of this uh you know Belair kind of chimed in telling Charlotte you might be standing here but you don't go here girlfriend it was kind of a bit like that and that got a bit of a pop from the from the fans um and then Bianca telling Rhea Ripley, the three of them standing in the ring, of course, telling Ripley that she's going to go run through her at TakeOver Portland before um, uh, predicting that she will take on Charlotte as the NXT champion at WrestleMania. So, you know, Charlotte told Bianca Belair that this is a, a conversation for the champions. So to stand to one side and fix her braid, uh, Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair kind of look at one another and they decide to group together to drop the queen, Charlotte Flair, before having a brief stare down of their own ahead of today's match at Portland. So I thought this was a really well put together segment. I'd love the inclusion of Charlotte Flair. I thought Bianca Belair was fantastic in this. Um, and it makes me kind of think, and I've, I've done a bit of fantasy booking on the Wrestling with John's Facebook page and on the WrestlingWithJohnners.com uh, website that I think that this could all lead to a potential three-way match at WrestleMania. Um, I think Charlotte's going to get involved in the championship match at TakeOver Portland, uh, leading to a kind of a, a no contest, a kind of a disqualification ending, uh, an indecisive conclusion to that match. And I think that 
they're going to put the three of them in the ring at WrestleMania, which I think will be uh, just desserts for Bianca Belair. I think she's an outstanding athlete and an outstanding performer. Um, with with Rhea Ripley defending her title against Belair and Charlotte Flair on April the fifth. But Max, um, I've, I've thrown out a bit more fantasy book in there. I've done that a couple of times today. Uh, what was your thoughts and my predictions that it could be a three way at Mania? I think you could could well be right there, Jonas. Uh, and for me, this this segment. Uh, kind of relieved a little bit of fear uh, towards the the Bel Air and Ripley match. I felt that uh, Charlotte uh, and the rumours that she was going to take on Rhea Ripley at, at WrestleMania kind of telegraphed what the result was going to be. And especially after uh, Bianca had such a great showing at the Royal Rumble, mm-hmm. I felt that that kind of like almost overlooking her uh, was a little bit of a disservice. I mean, she's had title shots before and never been able to c- quite like get over that that final hurdle. And I felt that it was a little bit of a disrespect that we was already looking past this match to yeah. who would be facing Rhea Ripley uh, next. So it was kind of the match that I was I was not that that fussed about to begin with. But this this uh, this uh, segment kind of put pay to all that. I felt that. It got me more excited for the match at, at, at Portland because you now you just don't know who is going to win. Um, it kind of really put Bianca clearly back in in the spotlight, and yeah. I was exactly like you. I was I was thinking this is leading to a, a three way at WrestleMania. This is uh this is going to end um, in a dusty finish, and we're going to get. Bianca and Rhea at Mania against, against Charlotte and I thought yep yeah, they've, they've really really pulled this match basically back out of the doldrums for me yeah I totally agree and um, I, I think they, they've obviously they're fully aware of what they've got in Bianca Belair they're fully aware of what they've got with Rhea Ripley obviously they've put the gold on her recently and um, yeah I think it's a fresh matchup it's a fresh uh, opponents for Charlotte Flair it kind of mm-hmm. Um, invigorates her a little bit as well. She's, you know, been doing the same thing, wrestling the same opponents for what seems like year after year, and to have her involved in a an NXT Championship match at Mania against two fresh opponents kind of makes her seem a bit more interesting as well. Um, and uh, that kind of does excite me, to be honest with you, because I think Charlotte Flair is an, an outstanding talent. I don't think she's deserving of ten world titles this early on <laughs> into her career, because it makes you think, you know, if she's got another ten years left in her, uh, what, what figure is she going to get up to by the time she? retire so you know but this has done you know something for me to kind of make Charlotte Flair a little bit more interesting as well and uh, this whole feud I think it will continue in to take over Portland I think uh, we will see more of this as the weeks and months go on and I think we are as you you said going to see a three-way at Mania so it's all good as far as I'm concerned love this segment Um, I thought that the facials on Bianca Belair when she was being disrespected by Charlotte was was absolutely amazing it sold it for me to be honest with you and if anything dare I say it possibly Rhea Ripley is is looking a bit like the odd one out at the moment in my eyes but um, any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think uh, Bianca Bella is an amazing talent. Uh, she's just, she's got charisma in absolute buckets. And, mm-hmm. and the, the whole land, you don't even go here. Just, mm-hmm. it's, it just speaks of like schoolyard battles. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I absolutely loved it. And if it wasn't for the opening segment, it probably would have been uh, line of the night. But I think. Um, um, Matt Riddle's uh, How Much Fish Could Bobby Fish Fish If Bobby <laughs> Fish Could Fish Fish uh, kind of just edges it for me. <laughs> yeah, totally. Did love that. Um, so, yeah, we that, that sets us up perfectly for uh, TakeOver Portland. Now, they've actually got six matches announced. Now, typically, they only have five in it on a TakeOver. Now, they might have thrown in the odd one here, but uh, um, currently, the lineup for TakeOver Portland, which is taking place next Sunday, if I'm not mistaken, the 16th of February, so two days after Valentine's Day. So, I know when Valentine's Day is, so I know that this is taking place on the Sunday. Uh, you've got Adam Cole, the current NXT champion, going up against Tommaso Ciampa, looking to regain uh, Goldie, of course. That will be a hell of a match. Uh, we're going to leave our predictions till next week, but just kind of running through the card. Obviously, we mentioned Johnny Gargano going up against Finn Balor in kind of a bit of a dream match for uh, wrestling fans everywhere. You've got the Bros Awaits, obviously the Dusty uh, Classic winners. 
Pete Dunne, Matt Riddle uh, going up against the undisputed era. And I think that Matt Riddle and Pete Dunne, their chemistry together, some might say they haven't got chemistry, but I think that, that you know, the way that one is playing off the other and uh, some of the things that uh, Matt Riddle's coming out of, coming out with lately is, is really uh, making me, you know, quite entertained by, by that uh, duo. And that's going to be a good match. Obviously, Rhea Ripley versus Bianca Belair for the NXT Women's Championship. Keith Lee, Dominic Dijakovic for the North, with the North American Championship on the line. And then, of course, you've got to Dakota Kai and Tiga Knox in that street fight that's been announced. Uh, so six matches. Yeah, maybe if any of them were going to drop down onto the kickoff, maybe the street fight with Tiga Knox, Dakota Kai. But uh, I wouldn't mind if all six are kind of on the main card. I think it's going to be a hell of a show. A hell of a show. Can't wait for that one. But um I think, if I'm not mistaken, Mags, we're going to be covering uh, TakeOver Portland together in, uh, I think, the, a day or two after the show itself. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's yourself that's going to be guesting on that one. Is, is that right? That's fine. <laughs> I, I, I think so. I think so. I, I will consult my diary, but I'm pretty sure I've got your name against it and I'll check through my oh, DMs. But uh, really? but there we go. Awesome. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. I know uh, a couple of days before I'm... Uh, I'm on a podcast with uh, Mr. Warren Hayes uh, going oh. over the predictions. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I love uh, these times when uh, when all those like, content creators get together and do predictions and review shows. It's, 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 it's what makes podcasting fun for me. 